Good morning, guys, and welcome to Unique and Different with me, Shanga. And today, I have the president of persons, persons who are visually impaired and also educational instructor at the Ministry of Education here to talk about her journey and being the new president of Harvey and what should we expect. So good morning, Candice. John, how are you doing? Good morning, Shamla. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. So Candice, before we go into you being the president of Harvey, can you tell us somebody that is visually impaired? I, remember, I read that, you know, you went to mainstream schooling, but before doing your schooling, you had to leave, go into uh, and learn the Braille, right? So yes. how was it like transitioning from mainstream to special school to learn the Braille, then back into mainstream schooling? Okay, so I went to a private primary school, so the point for in Seventh-day Adventist, because unfortunately, no other school wanted to accept me, no government school, so I went there. So my journey at that level was really good. I didn't know anything about visual impairment. I didn't understand. I just knew something was wrong. I knew that my vision, my sight rather, was not of the best, and I needed to sit to the front of the class in order to see on the blackboard, et cetera. But at, there was at a point that I know in order to survive at secondary school, something had to be done. So my mom would have met Kern Tyson's mom and she would have told her about School for Blind Children. And that is where my first set of interaction took place with persons who are just like myself. So I understood that I am not the only one who has a visual impairment. I'm not the only one who has gross eyes and looks this sweet. So the transition was a bit, at first, it was scary um, because you've seen every persons with all kinds of different, different visual impairment and it was scary. I didn't know what to expect, but it turned out really, really good. It was a good experience for me. I learned Braille really quickly and I learned those coping mechanisms that will help me to be quote-unquote, normal as possible. And then I transitioned back out into my secondary school, which was Vestini Secondary School. And it was a very easy transition. And that would have been that way because Kern Tyson was a former student of that school and who happens to be totally blind. So the school then, it wasn't like a new thing for them. Um, it's just that I have a little sight and all of that. And I had an itinerant teacher um mr kenneth ramata sadly he he has passed on but he made my time at vestony really easy in terms of what i needed braille material large print etc but all of my teachers and my classmates they made me feel as though i was part of a family and i was very very normal <laughs> and i think that is um tend to be the most helpful part of your journey you know yeah. um so, Candice, can you tell us a little bit about your background in terms of education? What are you qualifying in? Okay, so my whole my whole career path, I was not thinking about education. I always wanted to be a radio announcer slash song engineer. I wanted to get into media. And but somehow persons always came to me as a teenager wanting help for, with homework. And someone told me it should get into education. My first work, I work in corp. My first two jobs, I work in corporate world. And then I landed the opportunity to be an OGT at School for Blind Children. And that's where I realized my dream of really being in education. So I acquired a Bachelor of Education at UTT, University of Trinidad and Tobago. Then I went on to do a postgraduate diploma in literacy instruction. Persons who don't probably don't know, but we have a high rate of literacy issues in Trinidad, and it also falls in the disabled community as well. And I wanted to be able to make a difference. So I went and do that as a postgraduate diploma. And then I went on and do a master's in leadership in technical vocation, education training, and workforce development. Persons always tend to look down at TVET and say TVET is for persons who don't have, who's 
not academically inclined, but TFET is all around us. And I want to be able to make some kind of great impact in terms of TVET and workforce development, especially for persons with disabilities. I am currently um, employed with the Ministry of Education Student Support Services Division as a special education instructor. Because I have spent most, I've spent over 10 years in education and special ed in different capacity from being at National Center for Persons with Disability as the IT instructor, um, of, um, office administration instructor, as well as being a teacher's assistant at School for Blind, yes. also being a student's aide with um, Student Support Services Division. So when you need that knowledge and experience, right? And yes. the party, and you are the new president. How, what do you see? Where do you see Fabi going in terms of you know, intertwining everything and you being at that helm to, you know, make strategies and work with your team. Where do you see Pavi going in that regard? Okay. So Pavi have been existing for over 20, for 28 years, I, I should say. And it's really um, an honor to be the new president. Um, I would like to upkeep the vision and mission of PAVI and the core values of PAVI. PAVI have a place as an NGO in Trinidad and Tobago and maybe in the Caribbean at some point where our key thing is to provide that outreach community service to persons who have lost sight and losing sight. Um, because we do have a lot of persons losing sight from babies being born with visual impairment, babies acquiring visual impairment, and then young children, teenagers, adults. So we are there to really continue our community outreach, also to continue advo advocating as well, our public awareness and education programs. And um, one thing I would like to bring back, we did have a pilot a few years ago where we had an early intervention program and it was just a pilot. And I would like that pilot to become a reality. So if there's anyone out there who would like to partner with us to make this a reality, because early, event, early intervention is the key to um, really getting a young child um, being comfortable with being visually impaired. And also it's important for the parents as well. How can persons reach out to Pavi? Pardon, sorry? How can persons reach out to Pavi if they want to collaborate? Okay, so we are located at Campus House in St. Augustine. If you'd like to reach out to us, you can call us at 220-1073. 2201073, our office assistant, or rather coordinator, Paula Smith. She is there from nine to three, and you can call and get through to us, and she'll give you all of the necessary details. So. And this, honestly, thank you for coming and sharing a little bit about your story and also your role in Pavi and where you see Pavi going, you know, in the future, being, you know, at the helm of this organization. So thank you so much, Andes. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas and wishing you great success for 2024. Guys, with that being said. Thank you very much, Shamlan. We want to wish all of your viewers and the TTT family a Merry Christmas and all the best in 2024. And I look forward to having a, a conversation with you in the new year as to let you know what's happening with Papi and continue the great work as well. Definitely. And it's my pleasure, Candice. It's definitely going to continue into next year. So guys, with that being said, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to this week's segment of Unique, Not Different, as I always say. Be good. Do good. Bye, guys.